Well, what's up internet, it's your soul here and I'm just going to have a quick look at this uh, news story on the BBC site that's appeared recently, last few hours. It's, it's a quick thing but it's going to give some insight into the twisted logic that's in use in the mainstream and through these establishment kind of uh, mouthpieces and the people involved. And I'm going to I'm going to reveal some sort of some different perspectives, let's say, on, on this story that you might find interesting. There we go. So BBC Director General warns against assault on truth. OK. Sounds good. Yeah. No one wants an assault on the truth. The BBC's Director General has warned that the world is facing the biggest assault on truth since the 1930s. OK. Uh, maybe. Speaking at the Global Conference for Media F Freedom in London, Tony Hall said an assault on truth is an assault on democracy. Right, well, first of all, why are we facing this huge assault on the truth? Well, you know, partially it's because there's so much information and tools available to share information, ultimately. So, you know, you could say that we're not necessarily seeing more intention to manipulate the truth. We're just seeing more ability to manifest that intention to manipulate the truth. We're also seeing more ability to manifest the intention to maintain the truth and expose the truth. So, you know, he could say that, couldn't he? He could say, ah, we've also got these great opportunities in technology for everyone to work together to, to, to share the truth and expose the truth. But no, he's not saying that, is he? Because he's part of the BBC, who are a top-down hierarchical uh, infrastructure designed to act as basically the kind of propagandising mouthpiece for the British government. Um, so, you know, that straight away is quite telling, isn't it? He's not saying, uh, you know, go go out and empower yourselves. He's basically saying, no, the BBC is going to lead the way. <laughs> he would use the BBC's trusted voice to lead the way. Right, OK. And this part here about an assault on democracy is, I mean, we, I could talk for a very long time on that, but on the surface, an assault on truth is an assault on democracy. Well, that sounds legitimate, doesn't it? I mean, we need the truth to know who to vote for, right? And that determines what happens. Well, hang on a minute. Is there a deeper truth? Maybe they've missed something. From my perspective, basically, the deeper you go into the truth, the more you realise that democracy is unjust and is inherently flawed and inherently causes many of the problems that we're actually facing today, doesn't solve them. At the end of the day, democracy is a method for a small subset of the population to have agreement from most of the rest of the population that that small subset gets to determine what everyone else can and can't do or even say. So, first of all, that's not even right. Why should why should we ever agree to have a small group of people telling everyone else what they can and can't say or do, even if they claim to be doing it as a result of listening to us? Surely we're we're able to determine that for ourselves and, and direct our own destiny. Why do we need someone else to filter our demands through? It doesn't even make any sense, other than that their methods are to use physical violence and they have a monopoly on violence. So, basically, democracy is a way for... Uh, a subset of people to justify using violence to control the majority of people and there's some degree of communication going on between everybody as to what they agree and disagree that that violence can be used to control them for. So you could zoom out a bit more and basically say it's the majority of people saying that they can't think for themselves and they need someone else to threaten them with violence if they go beyond certain limits that they haven't even created for themselves. That's democracy. To me, that's madness. I mean, you know, there's better ways to live than that, for sure. Um, but again, he's not highlighting that. And the, the great irony of this is that I feel, having looked into this for a very long time, that um, one of the biggest threats to truth there is, is go from governments trying to censor the truth, A, to hide their own crimes, and B, to prevent people from realising that democracy itself is corrupt and that ultimately... When you really start questioning things deeply, you realise that it doesn't serve you and you don't need these top-down pyramid artificial hierarchies and corporations to dictate your life to you. So, you know, it's going to be interesting here what he says in the rest of this piece, considering that he's already, from my perspective, saying numerous things that are completely in the reverse of reality and deliberately kind of spreading half-truths to increase his own personal power and to justify his own personal power. He compared the spread of fake news to propaganda used by the Nazi party in the build-up to the Second World War. OK, well, quick point to note. I didn't know this until uh, not so long ago. The word propaganda actually means, its real meaning is basically just to propagate information. It's the propagation of information. There's nothing inherently negative 
um, or bad about propaganda. The term propaganda got spun during war wartime uh, as a result of the different militaries, American, British, Germany, um, viewing each other's government um, messages and telling their own populations, oh, look at this propaganda put out by the enemy, you know, it's terrible, blah, blah, blah. And from that, people's minds became basically brainwashed, ironically, to the idea that, oh, that, that any time somebody um, propagates information, you know, we can call that propaganda and from a very political sort of angle, determine that it must be bad and wrong. So in a way, although it might not have been intended, although it may have been intended, um, by kind of colouring the whole idea of propaganda with a negative smear, there's an actual undercurrent there to um, disempower people in a way, because it's basically saying, don't propagate information. Propagation of information is wrong and you know deserves to be, you should be questioning it kind of thing. Um, you should question it, but I don't know, you just need to be careful about the words and, and the way the words are being used. And definitely, I just wanted to point it out, because we very rarely hear that, and it nearly always is the case that propaganda is a term that's meant in a negative light. So, okay, so the spread of fake news. Well, fake news. What's fake news? Well, to have fake news, there must be real news. There must be the truth and there must be the lies. And sometimes people don't even know they're lying or misleading people. Sometimes they think they're saying the truth and they aren't. So how do we ultimately know when we listen to someone else whether what they're telling us is true or not? Well... You need to have your own intuition, your own knowledge. You have to have done a lot of your own research. You need to be very aware of the details of life itself and of what's happening through your own direct experience. So there's a fundamental flaw in the entire process of news reporting in that if you rely on those sources of information as being truthful just because you trust them or something like that, um, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're already in a hole, basically. There, there is no way to get the right information without you doing your own research. And you'll never know whether the information you have is real or not unless you've done enough questioning and searching of your own. Again, he doesn't point that out. He doesn't say, well, we need to use the technology of the world to empower each other and ourselves to, to check everything and enlighten ourselves and expand our horizons and open our minds and, and become better people. No, 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 none of that. Um, no, he's just going to sort of scare you into, um, you know, suggesting that we're facing uh, another Nazi holocaust as a result of fake news and, and, and political evil. Uh, but don't worry, him and his group are here to save us, just like they did in World War Two. <laughs> Tally ho! Uh, yeah, great. Um, All those who believe in integrity in news must work together to turn the tide, he said. All right, fair enough. Lord Hall added that the BBC had a role to play in battling fake news and press repression around the world. All right, well, he could start with the UK government's repression of the press by when they issue um, D-notices telling the press not to report on certain subjects. How many of they? How many times do they do that? We don't know, but it does definitely happen. And there are definitely news stories that I've seen published that got all got pulled very quickly. That were very important stories that I've got some copies of, and I'm sure lots of other people have. Um, uh, yeah. So one of the reasons why people don't trust the news, apart from uh, news reporters, apart from the fact they lie often, um, is because when very important stories that people have a very huge interest in uh, occur, sometimes they get pulled. And you don't hear this massive outcry from the BBC saying, oh, the government won't let us tell the truth on this or tell, talk about this story. Never, ever heard that. And yet that does happen. So, you know, maybe you should start at home before accusing of other, other people. Um, so we are ready to do even more to promote freedom of expression worldwide. OK, great. How about, again, starting at home? He told the conference, we need to reassert the core principles of good journalism like never before. In a sea of disinformation and partisan reporting, we need to stand up for independence, impartiality and reporting without fear or favour. He added, I'm determined that we use that unique reach and trusted voice to lead the way to create a global alliance for integrity in news. Right, OK, so he wants to use an established pyramid system to presumably combine with other pyramid systems uh, of which they will be at the top of the pyramid uh, in order to determine what's true and has integrity. Hmm, that sounds like it's got integrity, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like an empire. Yeah, that sounds like exactly how we have balance. That was sarcasm, by the way. Also on the conference panel were UK Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt, as well as human rights lawyer Amal Clooney, who has represented WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Clooney said the current media crisis involves both the silencing of truth and the amplification of misinformation to levels we have never seen before. It also, increase, it also includes 
the exposure of truth to levels we've never seen before. And ultimately, that's part of the problem for these people. I believe the way the world responds to this crisis will define our generation and determine whether democracy can survive. Well, again, coming back to what I was saying about democracy, you know, democracy is inherently flawed. It's inherently unfair. It's inherently unjust. It's inherently corrupt. Um, you know, it would be nice if it wasn't. It would be nice if you had something like direct democracy instead of representational democracy uh, and people actually had some power to wield within society. But we don't have that. We have a very corrupt representational democracy that doesn't really do justice to people's needs. Um, so I would say uh, the way the world responds to the crises, crises that we face um, in terms of seeking their own truth and living their own destiny and guiding themselves rather than bowing down to authority and bootlicking will determine whether or not democracy can survive. And in a light, in, in a world that's shine, shining light brightly from each individual of in total integrity and truth, in my opinion, democracy can't survive because it doesn't stand up to that level of integrity. Last month, Assange's legal team branded the US extradition case against him an outrageous and full frontal assault on journalistic rights, as the court ordered him to face a full extradition hearing next year. I'm not going to get into that, it's a massive subject. Um, really, this comment here is what, what drew me to make this video. So, this is from the BBC media editor Amal Rajan. On a part of, part of his blog, I haven't read the whole blog, but we don't really need to look at that right now because the points here are ample. In some democracies, journalists are suddenly presumed guilty until proven innocent. Again, I would suggest to you that part of that problem is democracy. The fact that you have a subset of the population who are able to do such things as determine people are guilty until proven innocent. If we didn't have democracy and we had more balanced power within society, then even if a subset of people do start doing things like determining people are guilty until proven innocent, the majority of people who are sane would be able to stand up and correctly resolve the situation without fear of being beaten by police with truncheons. The beatings given to journalists in India and the verbal beatings meted out by President Trump are both motivated by the generally false belief that journalists are part of a crooked elite that is conspiring, conspiring against the public. Well, I don't know too much about India, but I do know that Donald Trump is, from my perspective, very cor corrupt and definitely part of a crooked elite and definitely conspiring against the public in numerous provable ways uh, despite you know all claims to the contrary you've only got to look at the the, um, the changes to the legal system that he's made in america to find countless examples of things that he's done that ultimately we can, people can debate with these all day long but there are many things he's done which benefit only the wealthy elite and that harm the environment and so on um, so but anyway claiming that his attacks on the media are all based in the idea that, that that he's against this crooked elite and the journalists are part of that crooked elite. That is what he says, but that's not really why he's doing it. He's doing it partially because the, the journalists are one of the groups who expose him and will make him look an idiot by telling the truth. Even if they only tell 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of the truth about him, that's enough to make him look like an idiot. So he knows that if he can discredit the media as much as possible and play up to the fact that the media are often corrupt, then he knows that his sort of kind of dogged followers will prefer his version of events over the media's. So he can turn his supporters against the media. Then when the media expose the things that he does, he can just say, oh, well, it's this crooked cabal and these crooked journalists just trying to get rid of me, your saviour. Um, and that is pretty much what he's doing as far as I'm concerned. It's really a nightmare. And it all comes down to this whole thing about the journalists and reporting groups having power. And they shouldn't have power. They, they should just be at best people you can listen to to get information if you want. We should have our own ways of getting this information that don't rely on centralised authorities and, and gatekeepers and filtration systems, basically. And a real democracy or a real society that's balanced and that has integrity at its heart would never allow any sort of middle man layer to come between itself and the truth, which we are doing and calling it journalists or journalism. Often, anyway. Um, and then he says here, many journalists do appalling things every day. Many, many, many <laughs> journalists do appalling things every day. Not a few, many, lots of them do appalling things every day. Have hidden agendas or base morals and poison the public domain. 
Right, so all the accusations that people make against journalists, he's agreeing that many journalists do that, and the accusations basically are right. But a majority don't. Oh, okay. So there are lots who are bad, but there are still more that aren't. All right. Well, if you look at the science of propaganda, where, where propaganda means mislead people, you'll realise that the, the methodology is to shed or share truth 80 to 90 percent of the time or more. So the, the 5, 10, 15, 20 percent of lies you put out get past people's filters because they know that most of the time the information you give them is true. So therefore, they're going to be more trusting of you, less likely to question what you're saying. And that's how brainwashing of that kind works on a mass level. So, yeah, if you didn't have a majority of reporters who who were trustworthy, then the brainwashing system wouldn't work. So by saying that, that there are, you know, a majority of good reporters is not is meaningless. It, the problem is you've got the many journalists doing appalling things every day. That's the whole problem. And if you and, you know, how does the average person watching the news or reading a newspaper know at first glance whether they're listening to a good reporter or one of these mindfuck reporters? You know, they've got no way of doing that unless they monitor the journalists all day, every day. And if they're going to do that, they might as well monitor the world every day. Like I'm suggesting, like we work together using technology to do that, to be our own journalists. So this is so flawed. It's ridiculous. Um Restoring trust in them, particularly in an era of unreliable information, will require outstanding journalism that inspires the public and a culture willing to make heroes of such reporters. That in turn can only happen if there is reliable financing for high quality and independent journalism. And the best guarantee of independence is profit. So he's basically, all of this is basically an end line that ends in pay us money. You won't get the truth unless you pay us lots of money. Really? Really? Okay, well, what about just doing it because it's right? And, and why does being paid a lot of money mean you're going to tell the truth? Maybe being paid a lot of money means you're going to tell and tell the world what the people paying you the money want them to tell, want you to tell them, everyone else. You know, in other words, if I get a job for $20,000 at a low-level newspaper, you know, I could be bought off by... A local businessman quite easily because I don't I don't have a huge amount of money. He could only pay me five or ten thousand dollars, and I could you know that's that. I, I'm going to tell him uh, skew the news in his favour. If I work for a big newspaper and maybe I'm earning one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, first of all I could still take a bribe from anyone anyway. Secondly, I'm now basically more likely to bow down to the people paying me the one hundred fifty thousand dollars because it's going to be harder to get that job somewhere else. Basically, whoever's got the money gets to call the shots. That's how it works, right? So all, all he's really advocating for is centralised authoritarian systems and claiming that somehow that's better for truth. But we know from history that it isn't. I know from personal experience that having lots of independent people collaborating produces much better results as far as the truth is concerned than having centralisation. It just, it's just inevitable. If you've got 100 people who don't even know each other all working on the same thing, not even necessarily for money, but possibly for getting a share of money like you can on the Steam blockchain, for example, through upvoting, which is the whole community of Steam gets to upvote. You've now got basically 100,000 people or 60, however many thousand people collaborating to determine what's truth. And in Steam, it's called the proof of brain algorithm. Basically, you prove that you are valid in your work and just by the fact that lots of people check it and view it and say it's good. We don't have that with the mainstream media. We basically have, like the BBC is the pinnacle of the opposite of that. It's literally forced on you. They literally claim that the government has the right to fine you or, or you know, I'm not sure whether they can put you in jail for not paying your TV licence, but they can definitely fine you and cause you problems in court. And, you know, that's that's non-voluntary enforced news reporting. <laughs> it's literally the opposite of the wisdom of the crowd. So the idea that the BBC is going to lead anything with regards to integrity is a complete denial of logic, complete denial of reality, and frankly insane. Um, so yeah, only any anybody who actually thinks that what this is saying is true needs to take some time out, I would suggest, go on a long camping holiday or something like that, and meditate a lot and think about what's actually happening. How do you get to the truth? Do you get to the truth through a middleman? So yeah, um, the other thing to mention here Professor Udo Ulfkutter, probably pronounced his name wrong, but uh, now deceased. He was in Germany, uh, editor of 
Germany's second biggest newspaper, as I recall. And he did an interview on RT News and I believe wrote a book about how he was paid by the CIA for most of his career to lie uh, to the world through the news about America and stories that they wanted him to lie about in order to make America look better. And not only did he say that and apologise because he realised it was wrong years later and he, he actually said that he felt like he was being involved in creating another Cold War and he didn't want to be, you know, he didn't want to do that. He also said that literally every other person in the industry he knew was also being paid by the CIA to do that. So you've got somebody who should know, who is risking his life, and actually he did die not long after making these statements of a heart attack, and known, knowing that the CIA is openly, it's been openly recorded since the 60s, 1960s, that the CIA has the ability to trigger heart attacks in a very hard or impossible to trace way. Uh, you know, it's possible he lost his life for telling us that's in, this information, and... He's basically telling you that you can't trust mainstream media, full stop. They're all in the pay of someone somewhere. So, you know, logic, I'm an engineer. I'm somebody who solves problems for a job, basically. That's that's what I get hired to do. You know, if I can't solve a problem, I don't get paid or I lose my job. So, you know, when I look at this, I just look at it as logic. It's a machine. The whole thing is a system. It's a machine. I don't say, oh, well, yes, we must have more money going to the pyramid system in order for it to do to pay journalists more money so that they can somehow be less corruptible. Uh, no, that's not the source of the problem. The source of the problem is not them not having enough money. The source of the problem is the fact that they exist in the first place and that society has given them power uh, to, to do the things they do and to tell us what's true. Just don't do it anymore. Use the technology we now have that many engineers have worked hard to produce for us to bypass all these problems. The Steam ecosystem, the Steam blockchain, Many websites running on Steam. Steam is a virtually uncensored. Um, many people claim that Steam is censored because they get downvoted and the posts get hidden on some sites, but that's not Steam. That's steamit.com, the website and other websites. Steam is a blockchain. Your posts are not censored on the Steam blockchain unless you're basically committing serious crime, uh, which is you know hardly ever happens, hardly ever needs to be dealt with. Um, you you will not be censored on there. You can be upvoted. You can be paid in cryptocurrency for making comments. You can go to the new site, 3speak.online, which is in alpha stage right now. It's basically going to be uh, Steam's version of YouTube, uh, uncensored, effectively, you know, what YouTube should be and used to be. Uh, you know, we have the technology for us to work together to solve problems, to get to the truth, and financially support each other in the process without being talked down to by and having to bootleg these people and even be forced through violence to pay them money um, for the privilege of, of having them tell us what's true. Those days are gone, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, we have this technology, so let's use it. Uh, you can go to steampeak.com, eureka.org, which is my network, ureka.org, which also feeds into the Steam blockchain. And 3Speak Online is, is the video site which I'm going to upload this to. And um, please do check all these sites out. We don't need to be talked down to. We don't need to be fed all these lies anymore. We can solve our own problems. Our destiny is both in the stars and it's in our own empowerment as well. So let's do this. So yeah, do let us know what you think and feel about this in the comments and uh, hit me an upvote and uh, reblog if you like. And uh, yeah, until next time, keep it real and uh, I'll see you then. Peace.